The only thing I remember is vaguely setting up the job and then I remember like a pink flash. I thought a bomb went off or I was in a fire or something exploded because I looked down at my body and I was just completely cooked. I got life flighted to Grady Memorial Hospital to their burn unit. After about the seventh surgery, they told me that my ulnar artery that's supplying blood to my right hand was like non-existent. My hand was pretty much just gonna die. And so that's when I told them to amputate it. I was always like really like ADD, I guess, growing up. When I was 15, my parents got me a drum kit for Christmas and I was playing um, rhythms the first day I got it, you know, Eric Clapton and B.B. King. My thoughts in the hospital after I had my hand amputated was, you know, I'm not playing drums anymore, I'm not playing guitar anymore, like everything you can't do with, you know, two or one hand. All these things thrown in my face at one time, you know, just kind of weighed down heavy. You can only stay depressed for so long, you know. There's really no other option besides to take what you have and do something with it. My teacher showed me some videos of this robot, Shimon, that played marimba. I was just completely mind blown. And so I was all excited and I knew that I was like, Gil's probably the guy I should talk to. So everyone is talking now about robots taking our jobs. And some people look at me and say, are you evil? I understand a robot that will build a car and take a manufacturing job. I even understand a robot that will clean a floor and will take cleaning jobs. But are you going to take music from us? Music, the most human and emotional thing. So obviously the answer is a huge no. My robots are there in order to inspire human, in order to take humans and push them to a new direction and explore new things. They don't have instructions, they don't follow pre-recorded anything. Everything that they do is based on what they listen. About a couple of years ago, I got an email from Jason Barnes, who I didn't know, and he said, I, I lost my arm in an accident. It was very de devastating for me. Life for me was music. I'm, I'm a drummer, and I saw your videos online. Can you maybe use some technology to develop a robotic arm? The main thing that he wanted was to be able to control the grip of the stick, but he doesn't have a uh, wrist and he doesn't have power. So he cannot control how hard he hits, and that's very important. That's a lot of expression from, from drummers to hit very tight and to hit very loose. I, I really saw the potential. It, I saw, wow, we can really make something amazing from that. As soon as I got the email back from him, I was just like in awe, you know? It was, it was kind of great to have somebody on my side that was willing to help me get my life back. Um, we sort of brainstormed, uh, Gil and I and some other classmates and, and some colleagues, about how we could develop sort of an electromechanical uh, device that would replace the um, functionality of his lost fingers and hands and wrists. We put some EMG sensors on his arm and based off of how he flexes, it recreates the bounce capability. After eight months of thought, we we called him and said, it's ready. He didn't see the arm until that day that uh, it came back from California, from this company maker. He, he was really amazed the first time he, he used it. Without the project, we probably wouldn't have uh, met. But now we are gigging buddies. We, we, we travel uh, around the world and, and play together. They have this uh, robotic band um, that's been out for a while and it's just a bunch of robots but everything's pre-programmed, nothing's you know improvised, nobody's jamming. And so with something like this it's, it's kind of a brings a whole new thing to the table you know having 
half robot, half man band just kind of you know, coincided with each other. The robots, they they never mess up, you know, so everything's on time, everything's steady. So you can get to a point where the music kind of sounds really robotic and just too perfect and there's no feel behind it. But yeah, a lot of times uh, you just kind of get caught up in the moment and you don't really realize that it's, that's a robot. Even though they might be playing the same style like jazz or, or rock or something, you're going to get different types of uh, improvisations or different types of um, phrasing just because Shimon is not physically shaped like a person. There, there's no other person on the planet that has eight arms like Shimon does that can play all of these different patterns that, that, that Shimon is capable of. Or even with Jason and his prosthetic, he's able to play like 40 hertz with, with one hand, which is ridiculous. You know? Nobody can do that. When you come with your human emotions and, and expression and you are met with robots that have computation power and mechanical abilities, there can be a spark that would lead to amazing music that, that would really be something new and, and unique. So I was like on the plane to, uh, I believe it was France, and I kind of just was thinking, you know, what, what exactly would I be doing if this wouldn't have happened to me? You know, right now I'd be at home working the same job, not really doing anything, and I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm traveling now. My, my life is awesome. I'm going places and getting paid to play music, which is all I ever wanted to do in the first place. You know, if you see something like that in a 90s movie, you know, it's science fiction. Now people are having to move stuff out of science fiction, you know, put it in nonfiction because that kind of stuff's real now.